In today's video, I will break down how you can use the pivot function in Power BI, and I will show you how you can apply it to numbers, how you can apply it to text values that have an index column, and what you can do if you don't have this index column. So what inspired me to make this video was a question I got on my blog from Conrad. He had a question about pivoting data and the data set that he wanted to transform looked as follows. He had a data set where on the left, you have the months and a certain name and his goal output was to get an Excel table that looks like this. So each of the values that he has, so N1 is gonna be on row one, but if it belongs to a certain month, he wants it to be allocated to that month as well. So what is the challenge in that? Let's have a look because this will include the pivoting function. So in Power BI, I first have a basic data set that's gonna help you in understanding what it does. So just having this data set, if you go to the transform column and go to pivot column, that's the pivoting option I'm talking about. And pivot column, what it does is the selected column you take, it will try to put it into the columns instead of in the rows. So if you, for example, select the month here, because we want to have the month in the columns, you could select pivot column, and then it's asking you what the values column is here. So the values column, if you have a number, is the one that will be summarized. So for example, if you have multiple values per month, it could be that you summarize it by taking the sum of those values. So this is the basic operation. If you press okay now, you're gonna find that now the months are in the columns, and that each of these items that we had is in the rows. So that's easy enough. If you work with numbers, you're not gonna experience any issues at all. Now let's go to the data set that I received for the challenge. So this data set has a month number, and the challenge was that each of the numbers here at the end needs to be in a certain row. Okay, so let's see what happens. First of all, if you click on the month and you would do the same trick, you click on pivot column, you're going to be asked for the values column. And in this case, our values column includes a name. Uh, it includes a text value. It's a t the, the type of the column is text because there's letters in here. So if you would now say that name is the column here and you click on advanced, you're, you're going to find that it will never tell you to sum it up because text values can't be summed up. But we could click OK in general, and this is the result. That's not what we want to have. So if we go back into the pivoted options with the wheel, then what you could look at is to look at don't aggregate. So instead of aggregating the numbers, it doesn't do it right now. And this is the famous error that we'll get. If you click on it, it tells you that there were too many elements in the enumeration to complete the operation, which of course sounds totally magic because I have no idea what this means. Now, let me first help you solve the first problem that we have here. So since the end goal is to get our result in the table like this, we're going to need to have an index column and the months here. So what I can do is back in Power BI, I go to this name column, click on add column, and I extract the last character in here. So in this case, I will only have the numbers and I will call this one, uh, let's see, an index column. I'd like to make this, for now, I'll just make it a whole number. This is not necessary. And now if we want to pivot this, we could select the month again, go to transform, pivot column, and in the options here, I could say don't aggregate. And then still the values column is the name. But since I say don't aggregate, and because I have an index column, you'll have the result that you need because it now knows Okay, there is an index column, which is gonna represent each of the rows that we need. So that's already the, how we solve the first challenge. But that's not usually what your data set is like. Because if we go back to what we had, actually each of those values already had a number behind it. So we knew in what row it had to be. So our third data set, it includes a column with the names that we want our values to be separated on, and it includes a month number. And if we want to separate that, a naive solution would be to try the same as we did earlier. You click on the, uh, the month, the month that you want to have in the, in the columns. You click on pivot column. It's going to have the, the name as a values column and you click on don't aggregate. 
So of course we're going to get that same error we had earlier because Power Query does not know on which of the lines to return the values. Okay. So we go back here. So what is the solution we could do? So we need some way to let Power Query know on which of the lines our value should return. And to do that, you can find the, the column with the values. And on each of the unique values here, we're going to add a separate number for it to sort on. So you can uh, select that column, go to Home, click on Group By. And one thing you'll have to do is click Operation All Rows. I usually name this Details. And what's happening now is that it returns the, the unique values of name. And on the side, there is a table object with all the sum summarized rows. If you click next to it, you can actually see which of the lines were separated. Now, what's left here for us to do is to give a unique ID to each of these numbers, uh, for each of these names. So you can go to add column, you press index column from one. And because earlier we had the same order, I'd like it to be reversed, just for the example. So I'm starting at five, and then each step I'm just returning a minus one. Then before we can do our pivoting, we still need to get back our month column. And when you group it, normally some columns are lost if you don't group it on that number. But what you can do is in this details column, you can click on the arrow, click the month, the name we already have, and expand it. Now, if you take a close look at this table here, you'll find that each of the names now has a unique number that is repeated, that the same number is repeated for the, for the same name. And that's a column that we can use to distribute each of the rows to the right row number when we pivot our column. So let's give that a try. If you want to pivot your names, then your months are going to be in the width. So select the month, go to transform. And then our value column is the name column, which we will not aggregate. Click OK. And now you find that the index column in the beginning here even though this number was not provided to us in any way, you can generate it yourself. And after generating it, you can just show it and pivot it on. A last thing here that would be good to add is that when you're working with text values and you're pivoting them, make sure that when you pivot, there's only a single value in each of the cells. Otherwise, it's going to tell you that it's enumerating too many elements. Let me show you an example. If we go back to the source, and in the bottom here, in month four, an A would occur twice. And of course, we can add an index and expand it. And you'll find that NA in month four now has index five. But then if you pivot your column, then this NA one in month four is going to tell you that there's too many elements in the enumeration. So make sure that when you use your pivot function, that you don't have multiple values in the cells. Okay, that was it for today. I hope this broke down for you, how you can use the pivot function. And if it brought you any value, please press subscribe. And I'll be releasing more videos on Power Query tricks, transformations, and just how to get more productive. I'll see you next time.